Coming up, I have a Philco model 46-200. This is a little Bakelite AM broadcast radio from 1946. This one's going to need a total rebuild. At least all the paper caps have to be changed out. And then we'll see how it works. This is a Philco Bakelite radio I picked up off of Facebook. It's just a standard AM radio. This is going to be around, I'm going to guess, uh, 1946 vintage. So before plugging this one in, the first thing we have to do is to uh, replace any capacitors, any paper capacitors that may be found in this. And it's going to have some in there for sure because we don't want to damage the tube. So I'm going to remove the knobs and we're going to open this unit up and do an inspection and then overhaul this, replace paper capacitors, and then we'll try it out. The back is held on by little metal clips on this unit. So to remove the back, we can just turn these clips. I think they just turn or they out or they pull out. Uh, they probably pull out, but if we just give them a turn, they should come out of the plastic like that. As being Bakelite, it's uh, quite brittle, so you got to be careful. Because Bakelite, if you, if you were to drop it or drop something on it, it will shatter. So here's the inside of this one. I don't see a transformer, so this is going to be an AA5 type chassis using octal tubes. Should be five tubes in this one. One, two, three, four, five, and there is. So there'll be a series, it'll be a series uh, um, power supply. The filaments will all be wound or wired in series with each other. This is the antenna going across the top here. We're going to remove the quarter inch. I think they're quarter inch. Of course they're quarter inch and I have a six millimeter under. One moment while I get the right wrench. This one's a quarter inch drive. So we'll remove the screws that hold the chassis in place. And then remove the chassis to work on it. On the bottom here, this is a model 46200. It lists the tubes that it's got in it. So it has a 35Z5 rectifier, a 50L6G audio output, a 7B7, a 7C6, a 7A8. It's a 455 kilohertz IF on this radio. Antenna should lift right out with the radio. Slide the chassis out. And the antenna, just basically slide the chassis away. And here is the chassis itself, complete with the antenna, which is basically glued together. It's just a bunch of wires that are glued together, attached here and over here onto the uh, main uh, oscillator coil. There's a light to light up the dial. Here is the chassis. Let's take a look at what we have underneath here. And sure enough, we have a number of paper capacitors that do most definitely need to be replaced. There are one, two, three, four, five, six for sure that have to be replaced. This is an electrolytic, I believe, this one, but uh, we'll be changing that one out as well. But definitely we have to change these ones because if we don't, these capacitors here are, uh, oh, this has got a, what the heck is this? Is this just a resistor? Or is that a selenium? That's a resistor, I guess. Um, if we don't change out these caps, then uh, we run the risk that uh, they're going to be leaking and applying a DC voltage to the grid where they're supposed to block the DC voltage, and that will, in turn, burn out the tubes. So before we do anything, we need to change out these caps at least and probably this one as well this one being the main filter i think this is the main filter here let's just see what this one is it's also a paper cap for sure it's held in place with this metal band that goes around it so we'll just bend that out of the way so that we can remove this there we go 
So this one here is 20 microfarad, 150 volt. It's, two, it's a dual 20, 150 volt uh, DC. This, we'll, we will replace this one with a uh, electrolytic, no problem. This is the main filter. But let me get my um, small caps and we'll start by changing out these paper ones first. I have a few of the caps that are required, so let's, I have three of them, so let's change these ones out right now to start. And then I'll get the others when the store opens up and uh, I can get back into the store and pick some more up because I'm getting, I'm getting kind of short, but I've got the 0 0.01 here, so we can put the 0 0.01 in. This is an audio coupling cap. This one goes from the volume control to the uh, grid of the uh, audio amplifier tube. Change this one down here. This one goes from this tube here. down to this tube. This is a point one.
and this would definitely be a coupling capacitor. That's what its job is, is to, to remove the DC from the uh, previous stage from getting into the grid of the next tube. So this would definitely be one of the ones that would uh, be problematic if it, uh, well, it will fail. It's not if, it's, it, it is. There's no chance that that tube is not bad. Also, I need to bring up something about what's called the outside foil. You'll notice on all these paper caps, there'll be a marking on it. It'll say outside foil. And that's because, well, there's an inside and an outside. And the, the foil on the outside tends to, will tend to act like an antenna and pick up signals. So you want that going to your, what, your low impedance side, I guess, the ground side um, of your circuit so that they're not going to pick up noise from out, the outside world and couple them into your next stage. So they go on the side, they see they're going to ground or going to the plate side of your of your previous stage. And it's it was an issue with these larger capacitors. Now, even the small dipped caps that I use will have an outside foil because one of the two plates is gonna be on the outside. But because of the physical size of them being much smaller, it is not nearly as big an issue as it was with these old ones. Yes, you can measure them with a with a scope, and I've shown how to do that before, as have, have others. You can put your scope probe on and reverse your probes and see which side has got more noise on it. The side that has the more noise is the outside foil, and I do that for a lot of caps when I get them. I will pre-mark them and usually put a dot or something on them. Um, on, on the bag itself or if they're the opposite I usually if I'm looking at them with the label facing me I'm assuming that the left side is the outside foil but occasionally some of them are not so when I measure them if it's the other side I'll put a dot on the actual cap when I buy them in bulk and measure them but again it's not as big an issue with modern capacitors as it is with these large ones uh, if you get the larger tubular, tubular size ones that have an, a larger surface area, yes, you might want to check those out. But the small ones like I'm using, the dipped caps, it's not as big a deal. But all the capacitors that I'm using, I have pre-screened them. And I am trying to put them in the same orientation that the original ones came out. I didn't have all of the values that I needed when I started working on this, so I'm going to put in what I've got and then get some new ones. And the new ones that I got to finish this up are physically different, but that doesn't matter. Capacity-wise, they're the same. The same ratings, same voltage rating, same uh, capacity. So even though the ones I'm going to put in from the next batch are tiny, little, small caps, they're still going to be fine. Get them all done. This uh, this was kind of an interesting one because you see they've wrapped a, a piece of wire around the end of the of this capacitor, which basically is acting like a resistor in series with the capacitor itself. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to I'm going to wrap that wire, which is the ground wire. I'm going to wrap that around the body of the cap that I'm putting in, just like it was done on the original.
I don't know why they'd wrap this <coughs> wire, this ground wire around the cap other than to maybe give some extra shielding, extra capacitance or extra extra inductance on the on the actual body of the cap itself because they had wound it around the cap. So we'll do the same. All right, I got some new capacitors for this radio. I hopefully I've got all the sizes I need. I've got a couple of electrolytics that I salvaged out of old uh, 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 power supplies, wall warts, basically, um, the, because I needed high voltage and spending six or seven dollars for one capacitor is unacceptable. These high voltage caps generally are quite expensive, and say it's not uncommon to pay you know six or seven dollars or eight dollars for one cap in this voltage range so we'll salvage a couple of those i've got some other small ones here they're a little different design than the others but uh, we should be able to get them working and they are high voltage caps so we should be able to get this radio working now with what i have so first we'll replace this big filter i'll just cut this one out this is just two uh, electrolytic capacitors they're 20 microfarads each at 150 volts i'm going to replace it with a 33 and a 33, they're 250 volt and 450 volt reading, shouldn't matter. So let's just cut these ones out, get this big filter out of the way first. We'll change that out and replace it with these two. I'll just put them together, put the two negatives together, and then we'll solder the wires on and I'll put some heat shrink tubing around the connections. Some of these other capacitors with shorter leads, I'm going to have to extend the leads, obviously, on them. But that's not a problem. It's not going to win any beauty contests, that's for sure, for anyone that looks in the chat in the bottom of the chassis. But uh, that's okay. It's not going to not going to matter. All that matters is electrically, it's going to work. So let me grab some heat shrink tubing. We'll get these ones installed. First, I'll connect up a common ground. I'm going to extend the length of the ground side on this one, just because it's the longer of the two. So put a nice connection there and we'll put some heat shrink tubing around the ground like that. Hopefully this stuff will shrink down small enough. I've got some smaller heat shrink tubing if needed. 
we'll see if this stuff well this will shrink down small enough There, that should that should insulate that one. I've got a, a couple of other pieces of, of heat shrink tubing, a little smaller stuff here that'll go over these other wires, and we'll just connect both of these ones for the positive side, and then we'll reconnect the negative side in. So let me open up the wires here a bit so they can splice them. I won't need this. Well, I guess I can. I can reattach them to that or, or just put a zap tie around to hold them in place. Two positive sides for the electrolytic main filter. Do the same for the other wire. And these two filters can probably be held in place by this clip just like the other ones were. There we go, that'll hold those in place. I can just pull this clip around here and lock it in place. And then my negative wire, as I say, I've left my negative wire long enough so that I can bring it back down and splice it back down to this one.
Okay, that's got the, the main filter, the main B-plus filter dealt with. Just get that wire out of the way. Like that, I guess probably good enough. Put it underneath here. Redo that clip. So that'll, that'll deal with the main filter. Now I just got these other ones to replace, which I say I do have some capacitors that should be good enough. I got a 0 0.02 to replace here, and this should be a, where is it? Is this it here? 0 0.02, here we go. This one's a, a film capacitor rated at, uh, 300 volts should be more than enough for this one to so say I'll have to extend the wires on here because obviously what's coming out is not going to be the leads are not going to be long enough so I have to extend all these wires bear with me while I bear some wire so I'm going to uh, just extend these wires a bit and then we'll throw some heat shrink tubing around them and uh, reconnect them to the other ones I normally wouldn't use this type of capacitor. It's just that um, the place that I normally go to get my, my conventional caps is not open on Monday. So I was uh, wanted to see if I could get this done today and save myself a separate trip. So I went to RP and they, of course, don't carry those other style of caps. They only carry this type. So I went with this type. Let's see what I need for lengthwise and I need to put that much on either side okay we'll cut this other one out and just put this one in place of it We take it right up to that tube socket in this case. I will put some heat shrink tubing on this uh, side here just to make sure it's not going to touch anything.
I know the heat shrink tubing is not needed. I just wanted to, just to make sure that it's at least partially insulated. Next one I got to change is this one down here. This one was a, what size was this one? This one was something else. What was it? 0.5? This one? 0 0.04. Okay, 0 0.04. Got some 0.04s here somewhere. 0 0.04. There we go. Well, 0 .4, 0 0.047 is what this one is. Again, uh, the leads are not going to be long enough. So I'll have to cut this one out and do the same. Extend the leads a little bit on this one. This one's going from this tube socket here down to this this connection. So I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing on at least the side that's going directly to the line cord. Just to insulate this a little bit. This one's actually connected directly to uh, one side of the line cord, this cap. It's right here. I'll unsolder the line cord, you can see it a little easier. Right to that one. So I'll connect this one here that I put the heat shrink tubing around. I'll connect it right up to the right up to here, and then uh, I can put the line cord back on. And that'll give me some insulation for the uh, the lead on here. The other side of this this uh, cap goes down to here on the uh, on this tube socket. So we'll just cut it off. That's where the two yellow wires go down here. So we'll just cut this one here out. Fish this down under this resistor. It goes around these uh, this tube socket here with the, the two yellow wires on it.
just make sure that this isn't touching anything, even though it's insulated. I just want to make sure that they're not, none of the wires are touching. Okay, what else is left on here? We got one down here, and uh, we got the one up at the front, up, up, up in the front end here. So this one is a 0 0.05. And I'm going to also replace that one with a 0 0.047 because that's all I could get. So I put a 0.047 in place of a 0.04, and I'm do the same for the for the uh, 0 0.05 just because I couldn't get that size. It's uh, a lot of these capacitors, all of these old caps, you just can't get the same um, size as before. They're obsolete, so you, you have to uh, compromise and go with a substitute. But fortunately, these are old AM radios, and it really doesn't make much of a difference. They'll work fine, even with a, a cap that's a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I know there's probably some radio fanatics out there that use their old tube gear for um, listening to constantly but I'm not one of them and as I've explained before the reason I don't is because um, you're just running up unnecessary hours on obsolete tubes and a lot of these tubes you'll sure you can quite often find old stock tubes kicking around this one's going to the other side of the power line you can quite often find old tubes kicking around, but the thing is, even if you do find old tubes kicking around, the people that have got the old stock, they want the bloody moon for them. You know, I mean, you're not getting them cheap, that's for sure. Uh, if you want them, you're going to pay whatever somebody wants for that tube, and that could be fifty, sixty, seventy dollars for a tube, sometimes even more. It was a really, a really oddball, obsolete value. Depends on how rare it is and what it's used in. Yeah, that one's in place. And then the other side went right up to this tube socket here. I think it was this one. Oh, the original lead might be long enough to reach there. The last one I have to change is this one. It's a .0015, which I could not get that exact size. What did I get here? I got a .001. I got two of them. So I can parallel these. This is just the antenna coupling cap. Nothing real fancy on this one. It just goes between this tuning um, coil. Actually, it's not the antenna. It's 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 going between ground and this um, tuning oscillator coil. So I may have to put two of them in parallel, but we'll try just this one by itself between the uh, ground and between here, and see whether it works. And then we can, once I do this one, we can try this radio out and see whether it uh, picks up anything at all. Uh, it should do something. I haven't tried it yet, I haven't plugged it in, so I don't know whether we've got bad tubes. You know, could it could have bad tubes for that matter, because nothing's been tested yet. We'll find out pretty quick. So I put this cap in place. Go 
be time to try it out. Looking at another um, radio, I found another one. I'm just negotiating with the seller whether he wants to sell it or trade it or trade it for something else or what he wants to do. But uh, say I'm looking at another one right now, and uh, its price is a little bit on the steep side for something that needs to be rebuilt. And I don't pay a lot of money. So when people are asking outrageous amount amount of money for, you know, a 50 or 60 year old radio, well, this one here, this is probably the most expensive one I've ever bought. This one here, and most of the tube radios that I buy, I get for twenty dollars or thirty dollars. Some people are asking, you know, $100 for an old radio that doesn't work. And, well, I don't pay that kind of money for an old radio, especially something that's just going to sit on the shelf once it's been restored. So I'm working on getting another one. We'll see whether I can make that happen. But first, let's plug this one in and see whether I get anything happening. I'm going to plug this into the dim bulb because uh, I don't know what's going to happen. So let me plug this into the dim bulb tester and we'll apply about half of its normal voltage because it'll be going in series with a, an incandescent light bulb. That way if there's something that's shorting it won't blow anything up. I'm going to keep you guys in suspense just a little bit longer as we look at the schematic for this one. So as you can see, it, the filaments are all in series. It's got a 14B6, a four, uh, 14A7, a 7A8, a 50L6, and a 35Y4 rectifier. So the it's an AC-DC radio, so it can operate off of AC or DC. You notice that there's 6.3 volt number 47.15 amp light bulb is strung across one of the filaments in parallel on that 35Y4 for rectifier because there's actually three terminals uh, on those rectifiers and that's what it's there for it's like a, a six volt tap that you can run a, a, a lamp in parallel with the the actual uh, filament so it's a it's a 35 volt uh, tube but it basically has two filaments in it one five volt five, five volt and one thirty volt filament and you can string a light bulb across one of the, the five volt filament that's on there um so your 7A8 is your converter that uh, picks up the RF, and it's also the oscillator. So the incoming RF from the antenna plus the oscillator, which is tuned with the C3 and C4, which is your ganged uh, tuner, uh, tuning capacitor, generates a, a, a signal that is mixed with the signal coming from the antenna, which produces an output, which is at 455 kilohertz, which is your first IF stage. IF is fed out from the plate at pin 2 of the 7A8 converter tube and into the transformer. This also feeds back into T3, the oscillator transformer, to provide the oscillation. The output of the first IF transformer goes into the 14A7 IF amplifier tube where it is amplified and sent on to the second IF transformer, also providing a feedback through to one of the grids on pin 5 of the 7A8 converter. Passing the second IF transformer goes into the 14B6, which is your detector, and your AVC, uh, which is your automatic volume control. So that's a dual tube. It's a, it's a triode, but it also has a diode built in. If you look on pin 6 and pin 5, you'll see that's the plate for the, uh, the diode for the detector. That's what detects the AM and demodulates the signal. The plate from the 14B6, pin number 2, blocking capacitor is that 0.4 microfarad C12, which feeds into the audio output stage. Your volume is controlled through the 14B6 tube. Audio is demodulated in the 14B6 detector tube between that and the second IF and fed out from the second IF into the volume control 
the wiper, the volume control is then passed through C18.01 microfarad into the grid of the detector ABC tube 14B6, where it's amplified, passed out through the plate on pin 2. The blocking capacitor C12 blocks the DC from the plate volt uh, plate circuit from getting into the grid of the audio output tube, and then the audio output tube provides you your output through T4, the audio output transformer. Now, when I fire the setup, I'm going to be doing a, a, just a quick adjustment for the IF transformers to maximize the audio, but I'm not going to be putting it on any test equipment or anything because this is just a broadcast receiver and it'll be more than sensitive enough to pick up all of the local stations and probably some distant ones at night as well because uh, sensitivity should actually be pretty good on this radio. All right, here we go. First power. It's a good sign. The light bulb lights up. Are we going to get any noise? Volume's cranked up. I see the tubes are starting to light up, which is a good sign because the filaments are all in series which means I don't have an open filament. <clears throat> I hear sound. Let's uh, give this full power and see what happens. Okay, full power. Let the tubes warm up. It works. I can't let that play. And you might be wondering where, where on earth is there an AM station around here that plays this kind of music? There isn't. There isn't an AM station. That's my test transmitter. I've got that little MP3 player, the one that I got for a dollar. I put uh, different music on that, and it's on a different it's on a different FM station, and I just pick that up and put it through my transmitter. So I can play classic music through my AM radio. Let me uh, swing that over to some royalty-free stuff so that I can actually let it play. Lots of distortion when you crank it up, but I think that sounds probably as good as this radio ever so it sounded when it was new. Having the open back speaker is not doing any justice to the microphone. It'll sound a lot better once I get it in the cabinet. I got lots of noise. Well, this one's fixed. I don't think I need to do anything to this one. I don't think I need to adjust anything. It seems to be pretty selective and the, the dial is right on. 
as far as the frequencies go. So say my AM reception in here kind of sucks. I got a lot of noise around this place um, with all the plasma TVs and crap and all the electronics that's running in here. Right now I'm sitting, well, where I'm sitting, I've got one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven fluorescent lamps that are powered by electronic ballasts. So they uh, tend to, those are eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, there's eight. I forgot about the one that's right over, right over the light, right over the bench. But um, yeah, they tend to throw a lot of noise. And then there's a plasma TV that's being watched in the other room. And my neighbor's got a plasma TV, a big one, that's always on. I, I mean, it's AM reception around here. It's pretty bad. Try the IF a bit on here. Is the next year, China will reopen, and uh, we will see consumption rebound next year, but not this year for a number of reasons. One is that um, this is, you know, a lot of people think of China dynamic zero COVID is a sort of a, a, a choice. They just want to do this. I, I think that part of this that is not really their choice because I have. Yeah, it's working good. I've tweaked this IF ever so slightly, peaked it up a bit. Just kind of peaking up the sound. That's a relatively weak station. It's Jazz Johal, and once you're all caught up on traffic, head on over to the 980 CKNW. It's more than news, it's context, perspective. NW is really weak. Oh, there it is. It's coming at you pretty good. Oh, news, news hour. They put the news, they put the global TV news on the radio. It's 980. Ten forty. Eleven thirty. Vancouver's number one for breaking news. Traffic. What the heck is that noise? I don't even know what station that is. I think it's the multicultural channel, but unless we got a new AM station. I have no idea where that station is, so that's why I'm kind of missing to see what it is. It's around 1200, maybe 1220. 
No, bring something. I'll bring something. And we can try teaching ourselves how to juggle. All right. Well, tomorrow is International Hangout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go hang out and juggle. No. Today's the only day to juggle? No. Yeah. Uh, I missed my opportunity? Yeah. You can juggle tonight. But after midnight. We've got more music. Let's get into it right here. Oh, it's party, baby. It must be a new station. It sounds like a... <laughs> sounds like a Punjabi station, but they were speaking English there. That sounds like Punjabi music to me. That's probably why I've never noticed this station before. I thought it was a multicultural channel down there, but... That might be crossover from mine. Yeah, that's just harmonic from my station. There's, there's my test transmitter. That's sounding good. I'm uh, going to put this together, and we'll uh, we'll test it once I get it all together. But I'm happy. I'm. I'm, I'm really happy because I this is my first 1946 Philco radio, Bakelite. So, another one to my collection. The uh, It's complete. It doesn't have any severe damage. There's a couple marks on here. I don't know if, if those will clean up or not. But let's get the uh, the unit back into its chassis, into the box. Actually, get the chassis back into the cabinet and attached. And... Uh, Get the knobs on it, we'll give it one final test. The chassis mounted again. Let's get the the tuning knobs and the volume knob. Make sure the antenna's in properly. And then the back cover just goes on like that. And there's a little, little clips. I've only got three of the four clips, but that'll hold the back on. Little clips go back in just like that. And yes, I know there's no fuse on this thing. It's something that they didn't put on them. It is UL listed, but uh, there is no fuse. Anyway, and there's no there's no strain relief on the cord. Well, there is. It's just not a very good one. Anyway, this is not something that's going to be left plugged in. I can assure you that uh, a radio like this, like all these old dinosaurs, should never ever under any circumstances be left plugged in when you're not actually listening to them. Um, fires were quite common back in the day for old radios like this and any old electronics from the early uh, days of radio. They weren't uh, all that great. Actions. So the major U.S. air carriers have made masking optional for the time being. Delta, United, Southwest, Alaska, American on domestic flights. Some of the international flights will continue to have the mandate as well. <laughs> Russian President Vladimir... Speaking of that, I was in a store the other day. And um, some stores still have the policy that you put on a mask. RP Electronics is one. And they have the right to do that. Any private business has the right to mandate that their customers and their staff wear a mask. That's up to the business. And you respect them. When you go into a business like that, you respect their, their request and you put on a mask. Well, I was in a store uh, yesterday and uh, this woman come in and wasn't wearing a mask. And there's a sign on the door that says all customers must, must wear a face mask and was approached by a staff member that asked her to put on a mask or to leave. And I had to listen, as well as everybody else within Earshot, had to listen to this Karen, as we'll call her, going completely irate and acting like a psycho. And everybody else in the whole entire store thought the same thing that I'm sure I did. You know, what an idiot. And um, when was asked to leave the store, went on, off on another rant. And uh, I'm just saying, you know, it's a business's 
right to ask their customers to put on a mask. And if they don't want to, then maybe they should take their business somewhere else because the rest of the customers in the store that are following those guidelines at the request of the business don't want to hear you. We don't care what your own personal agenda is. We don't want you around us. If you're going to be like that, get the F out. Go shop somewhere else. That's all I have to say about that. Masune, Masuno anyway. says a summit. That's my transmitters humming a bit, by the way. Anyway, that's, uh, this one's fixed. We now return my transmitter to its regularly scheduled programming. Classic AM radio type music. Well, there we go, this one's back together. Let's say it hums a bit when I, depending on what way I turn it because of the transmitter, it just interferes, right? Get a bit of an AC hum. If I turn it the right way, I don't get it. Anyway, that's it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.